Hi, I'm Derek Briggs, Product Manager for Sagami Rem Sales. Today, I'll explain how to drip feed a sub-program from your memory card on your Sagami machine. So the first thing you need to know when you try to drip feed off of the memory card in the machine is that this is actually a two-piece system. You have a PCM CIA compact flash adapter, which is here, and then you have your compact flash card. This is going to insert into your PCM CIA, and that's what's going to be inserted into your actual control. So the first things we're going to do on the control itself is check to make sure that some parameters are set properly. So there's a list of four parameters here that we're going to check, and those parameters is parameter number 138, bit 7. So if we press the system hard key, and we're going to type in 138, number search, and we're looking for bit 7, which is going to count from right to left, starting at 0. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, all the way to the left. It's already set to a 1. We're all set with 138 bit 7. The next parameter is parameter number 3030, number search. We're going to make sure that our M code digits is set to a 5. That's all set, already set in the machine. If it's not, go ahead and change those, and I'll go through that process. The next parameter is going to be 3404, number search, bit 2. So 3404, 0, 1, 2. This is SBP, it stands for subprogram. So this is actually a zero, we need that to be a one. So I need to turn on my parameter write enable. So I'm gonna press my offset button. I'm gonna be at the handy screen here. If you go to your offset screen, you just press the settings screen here, that'll bring you to the handy screen. And I'm gonna turn this parameter write enable on. I'm gonna go to MDI mode, I'm gonna press one and input. It's gonna give me an alarm, no problem at all. We can go ahead and change our parameters with the alarm present. Back to system, and I'm gonna highlight with the arrow key here, SBP, and I'm gonna make that a one. That's all set. Since we already have parameter write enable turned on, let's check our last one. That's gonna be parameter number 6030. 6030, number search. We wanna make sure that our subprogram call M code is 198. So we're going to be using M198 to call the program that's, that's resident on your compact flashcard. So all of our parameters are now set properly. We can go back to offset and we can turn off our parameter write enable by pressing zero input and reset our alarm. We're all set, no more alarm. Now, what we're going to do is make sure that our program on the card has no file extension. It cannot be called .txt, uh, .cnc, it needs to be no file extension. So if you write this code in a notepad file or a wordpad file, it's automatically typically gonna save as a .txt file. So what you would do is save that to your card and then rename it and just delete that file extension. So in order to show you what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna go to my folder and I'm gonna change my device, so OPRT, device change, and memory card here. So you'll see my memory card, the file on here is the only file, another thing that, that's very important, the only file, and I, program, I, I labeled this 08888, no file extension, no .txt. So if you have an extension, you'll just get an alarm when you try to read that from your main program. So go back to program. So here is my main CNC program. I made this very simple just for, for training purposes. Typically what you would do is say you're doing some engraving or some, some heavy uh, surfacing and things like that that take a lot of space and more space than what your CNC memory can handle, which if I go back to program and device change CNC memory, you're gonna see how much is free. Okay, so this machine has one megabyte of CNC memory storage. Some of these engraving or surfacing programs can get much larger than one megabyte. So that's when we're gonna use our card here to actually uh, put a larger program in there. So I write my normal program inside the machine and when I'm ready to do my uh, surfacing or engraving, I'm just gonna read M198P and my program number that's on my card. 
So M198P8888 is gonna call up the program on the card. Once we're done, inside the program is just a dwell for 10 seconds, and then it's gonna jump back out with an M99, and that's gonna bring me back to my main program. Once we get there, I'll explain a little bit more and why we have the GoTo and the N99 and things like of that sort in our uh, main CNC program. So I'm gonna go ahead and go to memory, and I'm gonna hit cycle start, and it jumped in to my 08888 program. This is, we're reading off the card. It's dwelling for 10 seconds. And you'll see, it's gonna jump back out. Now I'm back to my one program. It's gonna dwell for three more seconds and then end. So we read M198, we jumped into the card. We dwelled for 10 seconds. And what you saw was at the end of my 8888 program, is an M99, P99. So the P and the number afterward is gonna allow me to jump back to my CNC program in, within the CNC memory at a certain line number. So I have line N99 here. So I say M99, P99. It's gonna jump back into my main program at line number 99. If I did not have a P99, and I just said M99, then it would jump out at the very next line after I jumped into the card and jump down to N100 and then end my program. So you'll see as we run this again, it's gonna dwell for 10 seconds and you already see the G4U 3.0. The machine has already looked ahead and knows because of what I have at the end of my program that it needs to jump to the G4 U3.0 in my main program because I'm jumping to N99. So you drip feed up the card with M198, P8888, or whatever program number you choose with no file extension on the card. And that's how you would drip feed from a PCM CIA card on your Sagami machine.